Public service announcement. Passionate. Passionate. So passionate. Passionate. Let me tell you something. So what is this Passion PSA podcast? Who am I? Well, they call me Passion. Short for Passion, no last necessary. Why is there no last name necessary? Because the first name says it all. I am Passion and all that that embodies. What do I do here? I give you the life coaching that you know you need, but don't enroll yourself in. When did I start? Actually, 2017. I'd leave a PSA on my Instagram regarding something I'd observed, and now we've evolved to this. Why do I do it? Why not? If even one person is able to take away one thing that changes their life, someone else's life, or changes the world for the better, then I've done what I was charged to do. So come on in, sit and listen for a while. There's something here for everyone at the Passion PSA Podcast. Greetings and salutations, my beloved passionists, newcomers, visitors, and guests. Welcome to another episode of the Passion PSA Podcast, where I passion no last necessary. Your Get You Right Guru issue a weekly public service announcement about whatever I have observed or was on my mind. This is a four-year consideration zone where the objective is to offer you a perspective you may or may not have previously considered to A, expand your thinking, and B, aid you in becoming a better version of yourself, for yourself, and for others. This is a safe space, but not necessarily a delicate one. I'll never rob you of your right to feel what you feel same way. I won't sugarcoat the truth to make it more palatable. The goal is to get you to higher, more expanded thinking so you can operate as your highest and best self. If you're new here, affirmations are our first order of business so we can intentionally raise the vibration and start on one accord. Let's get on the same frequency. If you're ready, go ahead and take a deep breath. You are always welcome to repeat after me or to use this time to state your own affirmations. My steps are ordered. It is working for my good. I am safe. It is safe for me to trust. I am confident in my faith. I am confident in my decisions. I am surrounded by the love I desire. I am filled with the love I desire. Wonderful, amazing things happen to me always in all ways. I am well. It is well. All is well. Well is all. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Passion is. <laughs> Your guru been trying to get this one episode out for weeks. I literally made three failed physical attempts to record, tried again, but time ran out on me. And then the last time I got up to record only to find my iPad on 2% and the charger nowhere in sight. Um, after it's all said and done, in hindsight, there's a strong possibility there was so much resistance because what I wanted to discuss was just a conversation I really needed to have with myself and not like you couldn't benefit from it, but more like the story of Jacob wrestling with God. I couldn't let it go until I got the blessing. So now that I've had a chance to receive some messages and some downloads, I may or may not share it, but I feel way more sound and on track than I did. That said, is that the only reason I've been MIA? Negative. Last episode went up April 9th. The next episode should have gone up the 16th, but I wanted to wait to post on my actual birthday, which was the 18th. 18th came, wasn't finished editing the text. So I kept at it and decided to post the following Tuesday, which never happened, as I just talked about. And then Wednesday, I left for my birthday trip. That's an episode in and unto itself. Felt like, felt like I was talking too fast. I had to go gather myself real quick. I'm back. The trip... The memories, the experiences, the new friends, I'm going to tell y'all. But then I came back and it's been crazy. In the midst of the crazy, I get a surprise invite to a show to celebrate my birthday because I literally just barely made it to my birthday dinner. April was hectic. Anyway, story time. So I accept the invite and I move all kinds of things around and make this event happen. True to form. I'm overextended and trying to be too many people, trying to do too many things. And what started out as plenty of time turns into me just getting on the hutch at eight to drive to Brooklyn for a show that starts at eight. I'm starting in Mount Vernon. Bruh. So I leave a voice note for my sis telling her to voice note me if anything because I'm driving and I can't text. I let her know that I'm at the beginning of the rainbow and then my ETA is saying an hour and 11 minutes. It's bumper to bumper. Traffic is rolling 
at 15 miles an hour, I'm slamming on my brakes. So you have an idea of how far I'm not getting, right? Now, when I first start driving, before I go to do this drop off, I pray as I usually do when I get in the car. I ask for clear passage, safe travels, covering, ability to get where I'm going expeditiously. Okay, so swiftness and clear passage clearly didn't make it to God's ears because this sea of red lights from Mount Vernon through the Bronx, across the river, and into Queens is not what I prayed for. Okay. 40 minutes from the time I started driving and almost 30 minutes after I had gotten on the hutch, the bridge is in sight. Okay. I'm nowhere near crossing it, but I can at least see it. I leave another update voice note, and in this one, I tell her that I'm choosing to operate in the space of I am where I am supposed to be right now. In this traffic is where I am supposed to be right now. I had to have a conversation with myself because all of the if P then Q thoughts, they started to try to inch in. If you hadn't done this, if you refused to do this, you could have done this. You should have done that. I can't do mental stress in this moment. I'm already in traffic. People can't drive worse not, so I have to be alert. And despite the fact that I went to the bathroom right before I walked out the door, by the time I made it to my drop off, I felt like I had to pee again. Now, of course, I refused to accept that as a possibility because I felt like, well, I shouldn't have to pee and I didn't want to stop again. But as I'm sitting in this traffic, the reality is present. I got to use a bathroom and ain't nary a bathroom anywhere in sight. Okay. Sis tells me to send her the email where she can forward my ticket and tells me the steps I have to go through to access it. Bet. I get over the bridge. I get through Queens, Grand Central to the BQE. Now, there's only about seven minutes of driving above 30 miles per hour this entire journey. I get off at Tillery Street. Now, you know that race against time when you get to the front door and you're in a race against your bladder to make it to the bathroom? But every step closer to the bathroom, the pee descends a little more. This is that. This is that. This is that. But I'm still driving. In an unfamiliar neighborhood. Here's where it starts to get interesting. I'm coming off the highway and I'm in the far right lane, which if I keep going, this lane is going to put me on a lower level of the Manhattan Bridge. No good. The GPS is telling me I need to make a left ahead anyway. So now I'm trying to get over. Apparently, no one on this roadway is in the correct lane. So everyone in every lane is trying to get over. High stakes driving and bladder pressure is never a good combination. I see an opening in the middle lane. The person in the middle lane is trying to move right, but not well. No problem. I get in the lane. I need to move left again, but there's a huge SUV who needs to move to the same lane as me because he's in the turning lane and needs to go straight. We both make the move for the lane at the same time. He's on the gas pointed at my driver's side door, and if I don't cut the wheel and accelerate immediately, April 9th episode is the last episode indefinitely. There's only like a centimeter between his grill and my door. So we have a bladder that needed to be emptied at 7.50. It's now like 9.10. And in total, I've been in three close calls and one dance with death. So there's a full blast of adrenaline to go with this full bladder. There's no place to park and nothing to run into quickly to save myself. Peeing in the seat ain't no option. What do I do? <laughs> what I always do. I black MacGyver the situation. I'm going to spare you the details, but suffice it to say, crisis averted and situation handled. Come on, praise God. But it's 930. I'm still not at the venue. I'm still not parked. And now I'm just marveling at everything that transpired in the last 10 minutes. I'm getting closer to the destination. So I'm looking for parking. I'm keeping sis updated on what transpired. She's telling me from the time I declare that I'm where I'm supposed to be, she joined me energetically in keeping me lifted, praying my safe passage, praying for my peace and calm, praying for a hedge of protection around me. And she's also advising me that for a show that I'm an hour and 30 minutes late for, I haven't missed a thing. Literally one act had gone on and the same act was going to come back out later in the show anyway. So I really didn't miss anything. I hit her back. I drive around a little more. Finally find a parking. I text her to let her know I'm parked and I should be in shortly. But when it all, it all falls down. I'm telling you all, it all falls down. So I send this message and attempt to send another one. It won't send like the screen froze. 
then the phone goes blackish. It wasn't like that powered off screen, but more like that screen right after you power back on, but before anything comes up. Then it goes to the Samsung Galaxy screen. It's a simple reboot, right? It stays like that. So remember, I sent her the email address and she emailed me my ticket. Remember, she told me everything I needed to do to access it because it was through Ticketmaster. Remember that when your phone won't turn on, you can't access anything in your phone, like any of these text messages. So I get to the security table. I ask the officer if he has the phone pin, thinking if I could take out the SIM, that'll shut the phone down and I can properly restart. He doesn't have a pin and I can't find mine. So now, with these nails that were secured with glue tabs, which makes it perfect for easy removal, but puts me in a bad way if I need to make a hasty move because the nail might pop off and defeat the purpose of having put them on in the first place. I'm trying to dig through the change purse of my wallet, which turns into me pouring everything out. Keep in mind, this is a security checkpoint at a major performance venue. So there are still wild people behind me online and they're trying to get in embarrassing but i found a pen so cool i popped the sim tray out nothing phone still glowing samsung galaxy security homie says go talk to the people at the ticket window they should be able to help you this is also after having to get searched and put everything back in my wallet and bag okay go to the ticket window ticket window homies like okay well do you know sis number by heart i do look under these names it gotta be there and it is. So he says someone from guest services is going to have to get her to come get you. Go talk to one of the people in the gray sweaters. Approach gray sweater, sis. Oh, no, I'm security. You got to talk to someone in a gray vest. Gray vest, sis, says, I don't have staff for that. So I don't know what to tell you. Like, talk to the head of security. Walks me to another sis. Sis says, well, do you have your charger? I say, sis, my phone is fully charged. It's just completely frozen. I already popped the SIM out. It won't power off or on. It's just stuck. I know the ticket information, but I don't know my sis number by heart. So I can't call her to come out or vouch for me. She's a little bit more empathetic than great vest sis. So she's like, well, see if they have a charger for your phone at the ticket window. That's the only thing I can suggest. Maybe plugging it up or plugging it in will reboot it. Now, I don't have faith in that. Like, what are we talking about? Plug up your fully charged phone and see if additional power will make it turn on. Like, because like, when have we seen that happen? The two things are going through my mind. One, this was why I divorced Samsung over a decade ago, right? Because of a similar situation. And two, ain't no way I've been through all of this just to get here and miss this show. Some got to give. So I go back to friend at the ticket window. I recount everything that happened when he sent me away. He got to typing and just shook his head the whole time. He then hands me my printed ticket and tells me to tell my sis she left me hanging out to dry. He tells someone else to walk me to the end of the line and advise the agents there that I'm all clear to go inside. All of the above happens. I finally make it inside. And when I get next to sis and attempt to show her my frozen phone screen, it had finally reset and was working like nothing ever happened. We took our first video of us jamming to the locks at 1034. That's two and a half hours from my first message to her that I was on my way. Most people, including my sis, and I'm not shading her, this is actually a conversation that we had, would have probably given up and said, yeah, okay. <laughs> all this resistance, all this confusion, all this negativity, clearly, this ain't where I'm supposed to be. I ain't going home. But my prayer, when I started driving, aside from giving gratitude, was built on the premise, I trust God. My declaration, when I was stuck in all that unrelenting traffic, was that I was where I was supposed to be in that moment, even though my plan said I was supposed to be in a seat at the Barclays. My question for you today, what does trust mean to you? When do you stop trusting? More than once this season and since we've started, we've talked about the fact that believing that all things are working for your good means that the bad things, the tragic things, the unforgivable things, they are all working for your good. And most of us have a pocket full of faith when it's working the way we want it to, or it at least appears somewhat similar. But the minute the picture doesn't look like the portrait we intended to paint, we're ready to throw away the whole canvas. So do you actually trust 
that the situation is under control and that it's working out the best way for you? Or do you only trust it after it's worked out? You know that trust game where you have to fall backwards and trust that the person behind you will catch you? Most of us fall trying to catch our balance just in case the person thinks it's funny to let us fall. So we don't actually fall properly because we don't trust fully. I said something. And if you really want me to preach, an improper fall causes more damage. A lot of us claim we have faith, but if our faith has stipulations, then how can we say we fully trust? And I get that most of us have lived a life that has included people that make us doubt almost anything and take everything with a grain of salt. It's unfortunate, but it's true. But if you live your life not trusting anything wholly and completely, why would you ever expect anyone to trust you that way? A whole lot of us climb to the peak of Mount Offended, whole time waving a bit of disrespect if someone doubts us in the least, knowing the fallibility of people. But you yourself won't even completely trust a being, a power, a source that you claim to believe is the maker and creator of all things. So you believe this power is in control and is working everything out for your highest good, but only if you approve what you see in front of you right now. But if the situation needs your approval, then shouldn't you be the one in control? And if you should be in control and God should take the back seat, well, then shouldn't you have gotten it right in the first place to not even need God in the car? Okay, Fashion, I hear what you're saying, but sometimes you got to know when to fall. Okay, and I hear you, Kenny Rogers. But are you ready for this offensive truth? Some of y'all are mistaking cowardice for discernment. You don't want to be further annoyed or better. You're afraid of your peace being further disturbed and your day being further shaken up or you're just plain old scared to be any more disappointed. So you start lying on your spirit to my, my spirit telling me to leave. Your spirit ain't said a word since an hour ago. In fact, it's the silence during the search that has you disarmed because you want direction. And since you're not hearing anything, you said to yourself, oh, that's my cue to exit. God ain't got nothing to do with that. Remember the propitiate episode? I asked what that meant and spirit told me that what I needed to do was trust. At the gate, with the people telling me, nah, it's a dub for you. The only thing I heard and faintly at that, so I leaned into that. Whatever it was gonna mean, but knowing that if it didn't work the way I planned it, I didn't know that the rest of the day could go smoothly, I just yielded. And so did the agent at the gate. And I was able to board. A year and a half later, once again at the gate with no choice but to stand on faith. I didn't get live. I didn't give up. And I just trusted. And the agent at the window granted me access. Now, I could list all of the things that could have gone differently if I had left earlier. But the truth is, I only know definitively how I imagine it would have gone. Let me repeat that. The only thing I know definitively is how I imagine it would have gone. I imagine that we would have been able to go out and eat and have some libations and shoot the breeze or sort of show, go on there smoothly, sat and listen to Flex, cut the songs off right when we started enjoying them and would have been happily ever after. I know after thinking about it that the traffic was because everyone that wasn't trying to get caught in Mother's Day traffic on Sunday thought they were smarter than a fifth grader and went out on Saturday. I know after thinking about it, that the venue I was thinking we would eat and drink in probably would have been shoulder to shoulder if we were even able to get in. I know that technology is going to technology. And there's nothing to say that that exact same phone crash scenario that happened to me, that it couldn't have happened to my sis prior to her sending me the text. Like any number of things that didn't get the chance to come up could have easily come up and had things played out differently. Then what? So again, do you trust fully? Do you know what it means to trust fully? When you're in the midst of the Job experience, do you lay down and die? Do you start taking matters into your own hands? Or do you do all you can and stand in faith that everything you've done counts, that it's all working out for you, and that it ain't over until it's over? And it's easy to ask these questions in hindsight, right? It's easy to show up to an episode sounding like the coolest of cucumbers, but prevention beats intervention 
every day. So if up until now, you never really evaluated your relationship with Source, if until this episode, you've always told yourself that you know how to trust unconditionally, but now you're feeling a little hot under the collar, I implore you to take a few minutes to think about it. What doesn't work still works. Often we do dictionary definitions, but today let's look at some synonyms for unconditional, right? I found unquestioning, unreserved, unlimited, unrestricted, wholehearted, complete, total, entire, full, outright, absolute, utter, all out, unequivocal, indubitable, categorical. There were more, but they didn't fit with what we're talking about here. How much can you see crumble in front your eyes before you start blaming and doubting God? If God, if Source is the master painter, all you gonna tell him, all the painting's supposed to look. And if you don't believe in a higher power, cool. To each one's own, and I'm not talking to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. But for those of you who believe something greater than you is out there and is directing this orchestra we call life, if the maestro tells you to play some notes that sound dissonant, or discordant to you, does that mean the maestro doesn't know music? Or is it possible that while it may sound crazy as individual notes or even as a section of the piece, is it possible that it has a place that is much bigger than what you realize? The craziness is so often part of a much bigger event that is in motion. For me, in this instance, I can think of so many things that happen that if they didn't, this would be a whole other episode. So aside from this subject of trust, what did I walk away from this experience with? Well, first, giving thanks that I'm who I am and that I do things the way I do. Passion point. It's not just okay to be the oddball. It's necessary. Often, people have fun at your expense. They mock you for what you do and they try to pressure you into not doing them because they don't see why it's valuable. It's too much. It's not that serious. After all the chaos with the near car accident and the near bathroom accident, all I could do was give thanks that I am who I am as I am. My practices, my habits, they're unconventional and a joke to everybody who ain't never been able to save me back up against the wall. But time and time again, those same unconventional and oddball practices have come through for me and saved my life. Passion point. Being equally yoked in relationships is not limited to intimate partner. My sis and I are on the same frequency. We are an energetic match. When my mind was clouded by what was happening in front of me, she was shoring me up spiritually. Get you some friends that'll pray you through when you can't pray for yourself. Get you some friends that understand a clarion call without you having to say, I need you to take up this mantle for me now. Pair up, group up with people who are of the same accord because in times like these, those are the ones that are going to get you through Passion point. Your trust in God can't come with fine print, terms and conditions, or a privacy policy. And it can't waver when things look bleak. Have you done it? Can you do it? Will you do it again? You asking us a whole lot of probing questions, Passion. You did it a couple of times, but those situations weren't that crazy. Can you do it if the situation is dire? I'll do you one better. I've trusted, prayed, praised, and believed my way through all the way, all the way up until it blew up in my face. And all I could do was cry at that point. I'm talking about defeated. I sure did lament. I sure did grieve. I was in bad shape. I thought I did everything right. So how did it not work out? But fool for thought, what if it was never supposed to work out and it was just an exercise in trust? The whole point was just to strengthen the ability to trust. Ha! Ah! You bugging. That way it make me trust more would make me more skeptical. Okay, and that's fair. But always remember, the thing that blew up in your face and crushed your spirit, as chaotic as that was, could very well have been protecting you from something even more catastrophic. Or it could have not been. And that's not a risk I'm excited about. Again, that's fair. But no risk, no reward. A whole lot of folks blindly trust the people they live with to wash their hands and their bodies when they're behind closed doors because they say they do. They don't, though. They get in the shower, but they don't wash. They may or may not turn on the sink, but they, the water, it definitely ain't hot. And the soap, that's out of the question. You trust them to touch your food, your face, 
and everything else their hands come in contact with. You trust them and they're fallible, lying selves implicitly. And you got terms and conditions for the one you believe created everything around you and in you. Okay. I'm going to let y'all rest on that. If you have listener letters, feel free to send them to my brilliant friend passion at gmail.com because somebody advised me that they were having issues with the other email. If you would like to be a financial supporter, you can send your donations to Podbean, PayPal, Linktree, or Zelle. All of them are listed in the description box below. If you can't do either of the above, leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, share this with five friends. Your support is always appreciated. I don't have too much more to say and I don't have too much more time to say it. Your Get You Right Guru is Signing off, y'all go forth, be great, be filled with bliss, be armed and empowered with knowledge. Trust. It's worth it. Even when it feels risky. Even when it feels like, for what was that? It's still worth it. There's a picture much greater than the one you see. And don't think be passionate. See you later.